www.sarasuparks.com if you look for healthy you h-e-a-l-t-h-y-u right and thank goodness you have the flyer here. yeah <laughs> yeah 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 so this is the i believe 21st session of healthy you um this is a the brainchild of our deputy director patty roberts who could not be with us tonight and i am not patty roberts my name is ann stadius i'm the recreation manager for the fitness centers and we're happy to have you here tonight we um we have a few general housekeeping things there's there's restrooms right out these doors and to your left so if you need to do so please feel free to get up and head out there we have as i said earlier we have some snacks and some coffee some water some sodas please feel free pretend like you're in your living room watching public television you want to go to the fridge feel free right we want you to feel comfortable so healthy you is something patty roberts started um a year ago, a little more than a year ago. And I'm just gonna read a couple of little things that she left because she generally goes through all this. We wanna make sure that everyone's aware. Um, so the topics that are discussed, it's a series of conversations and the topics that are discussed over the next, next months are ones that are very real and sensitive in nature. Depression, anxiety, domestic violence, trauma-informed care, suicide prevention and opioid use disorder. They're all tough conversations to have, but that's what we're doing here. So Patty has a real personal interest in this. Just 1,418 days ago, and she does count, she lost her son, Danny Roberts. He died from a heroin overdose that was laced with fentanyl. <clears throat> Pardon me. Danny died right here in Port St. Lucie. Danny was 22 years old and he had fought for eight years his battle with addiction. His parents, Patty, Patty and her husband, um, they were right there with him throughout his entire struggle. They fought for him, they fought against him, they fought with him, but the outcome remains the same. Danny is dead from this horrible disease and she misses him every single day. Through his eight-year battle with depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, and certainly substance use disorder outside the family, they didn't talk about it. They felt that they were alone in their battle and that no one else was suffering with the same disease. And for that, she harbors deep regrets. So the reason she's here is just that. She wants to learn more about mental health issues so she can help others in need. So this particular topic, dementia, is also near and dear to Patty's heart. She lost her mother at 76 years old to dementia several years ago. It's also near and dear to my heart. I lost my mother at 92 years old um, about seven years ago. She had Alzheimer's. Um, you know, it's a long progression. You deal with a lot of things, but looking back on it, I think of some of the humorous things when we didn't realize what was happening to her. She would call me up. She lived in Jacksonville. I lived here. And she would say, did you see that article in the newspaper this morning about blah, 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 whatever it was. No, no, mom, I, I don't get that newspaper. I live in a different city. <laughs> well, and then she would go on about whatever blah, 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 blah was. Didn't pick up on it, didn't notice the little, you know, the little signs that were beginning. We just thought mom was mom. Of course it progressed and was eventually diagnosed. And, you know, it takes its toll on the family and it takes its toll on the person. And the end result is always unfortunately the same. But having said that, we are very pleased to have tonight a subject matter expert in the field of dementia, Miss Donna True. And I'm going to read her bio because, you know, winging it might make a mistake. So Donna True <laughs> is a licensed clinical social worker. She is the program de development and outreach coordinator for the Council on Aging of Martin County at the Kane Center. 
Prior to accepting her position at the Kane Center, Ms. True worked for the Southeast Florida chapter of the Alzheimer's Association for 16 years. Ms. True obtained her AAS degree from Farmingdale, Long Island, her bachelor's in social work from Florida Atlantic University, and her master's in social work from Barry University. She has devoted her professional career to working with those who care who are affected by Alzheimer's or other types of memory loss disorders. She has been a support group facilitator since 1994. Ms. True is on the board of the Southeast, of Southeast Florida Honor Flight. Ms. True is a proud recipient of the 2017 NASW Treasure Coast Social Worker of the Year Award. The 2018 Senior Networking Service Award, hmm, and the 2012 Fearless Caregiver Community Fearless Caregiver Award. So, without further ado, let's welcome Ms. Donna True. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Anne. Welcome, everybody. I I know we are recording. Yes. So I have to stand right here and not move the whole time. And that's not me. So I'm going to raise this a little bit. Okay, good. Sound good. And I know there's at least one person who has to leave a little bit early. They're not being rude. They already told me in advance, they have to feed somebody tonight. So I can understand that. So don't worry when that person leaves. Okay. So again, my name is Donna True. And I'm just so happy to be here. I was here last year as well. And we always learn from each other. So we are going to go through, let me see if I can get this PowerPoint to work. Um, a little clip to the next slide. Oh boy. <laughs> they told me this would be fine. Here's our cursor. See, we can press the button. Yeah. Okay, has anybody else gone through this where you might have your glasses on top of your head, you might have them on the front of your shirt, and it's like, where's my glasses? Where are they? Has anybody done that besides me, you know? Or have you driven to the store and when you left, you're like, uh-oh, where's my car? And you go to where you thought you parked it and you don't see it, so you assume it's stolen, you know, something like that. That can be 100% normal. It's a very distracted world these days. So I have to look at the screen too. It's a very distracted world and we may not be paying attention. Many of us, as soon as we get to our destination or we're walking around the house or around work doing things and we're not paying attention, we're not focusing on things. So we forget that the glasses are there. We don't think about where we're parking the car. So what's the secret? Park on the same side every time you go, park the same place, far away. Don't try and get a close up spot because it's not even good for your brain. The more you can walk, if you're capable of walking, the better it is for your brain. That's not what everybody wanted to hear, was it? Nah. Um, okay, true or false question. My last name is true, but doesn't mean that all the answers are true. So true or false, dementia is a normal part of aging. No, I see you shaking your head. That's very false. Dementia is not a normal part of aging. And we're going to go into some of the what dementia is and some of the causes. So we will go through a lot of that. Okay. Excuse the profanity. It says, oh, crap, was that today? And there goes Noah's Ark without the dinosaurs. And it's called the first senior moment. Okay. Have to have a little humor. One of the things people want to know tonight is what is the difference between age-related and dementia-related memory changes? First of all, I want to clarify that as we age, our memories absolutely do change. We are not as sharp as we used to be. It's, it's a little bit slightly different though. So age-related, we all lose things from time to time, but we are able to retrace our steps. For example, if I am tomorrow I'm looking for my phone, I should be able to say, let's see, I know I had it on the way 
to the Port St. Lucie Community Center last night because I looked at it in my car before I went inside because I had the map on. So I'm thinking, I'm processing that whole thing in my head. Somebody with an Alzheimer's type of dementia might just blame who was ever in the room with them, most likely their closest family member. You stole my phone. I had it this morning and now it's missing and it's your fault. That type of thing. Hello, welcome. And I think there's a sign-in sheet somewhere going around. Is it back on the table? Okay, there is a sign-in sheet back on the table. So a person with a dementia-related memory loss, and I'll explain why later, they don't retrace their steps because they can't, because they have memory issues. We all occasionally make bad decisions. That is very normal. A person with dementia, any type of dementia, they have a new pattern of making bad decisions. And one of the things that happens to be very troubling to me is the inability to discern scams, you know, the sweepstakes, all that stuff, because the brain is changing. People can no longer say, everybody else is saying, oh, that's a scam. Everybody knows that's a scam, but somebody with dementia does not necessarily know that. Missing a monthly payment, it can happen to any one of us. We know how to fix it. We know that we have to pay again, or if we stop paying our electric bill or our water bill, that power or water is going to get shut off. Person with dementia, they might get their water turned off. They don't really even care. They don't notice. They don't know what to do about it. They don't know how to fix it. They don't know what to do about a missed payment. More bills come in and it just goes in the garbage. They don't, they don't think about what that really means. We all forget words, but we're able to hold a conversation. And that tip of your tongue thing and it comes back at 3 a.m. in the morning, that's very common. Like I said, it gets a little worse as we get a little bit older, but Somebody with dementia may get to the point where they're just not even able to hold a conversation. They're repeating the same questions over and over again in a very short period of time or during you know, one phone call. Like when you talk to your mom, she might've asked you again, and did you read this article in the paper? And then five minutes later, she asks, and again, and did you read this um, article in the paper when Anne has already answered her and said she doesn't live in the same town. Now that's my short term memory kicking in for Anne's story. Okay, that's my short term memory. We might forget the day, especially if you're retired, especially if you're on vacation, you don't even think about it, you know, might know, you know, it's 2022, but you don't really think about what's the actual date. you, we always know the month, almost always, um, things like that. But people with a, a Dementia could forget the year. If I ask somebody with dementia, what's the year? They might say 1965 or 1975 or whatever. They might be living in the past and they really do think it's that. They're not thinking that it's already 2022 or into the new century. And we all forget names from time to time, especially friends that we meet, um, things like that. We typically don't forget how many children we have. We don't forget who the members of our family are. We don't forget how we are related. We don't forget good friends of many years, that type of thing. It's just different enough to cause questions because we do forget, but this is a step beyond. Some of the red flags that I see for some people, the first sign, and if you've ever worked at a bank, you have, you'll know there are some people that come in all the time who are always checking every day, what's my balance? How much money do I have? And things like that, because they don't know how to keep track of their funds anymore. My mom also had dementia. She died at age 96. And she, one of the first things we saw was mom, mom said to me, Donna, I can't balance my checkbook anymore. I'm really sorry. And she recognized that. I'm so grateful that she did because she asked me for help. Most people won't do that. And, and it just, it absolutely broke my heart because that's the one thing she loved doing every month, balancing that checkbook to the penny, always. So that was for her, it was a big sign. And she knew she was forgetting things. She was very well aware of it. Most people are not. So asking the same question over and over again, um, not following through not being able to, it's like, why don't you go out to the car and bring your food in? And they say, okay. And that's where it ends. Nobody goes out to the car, nobody brings the food in, or it's trash day, why don't you take the trash out? Well, there here comes the truck and your trash isn't out yet. So uh, because that short term memory component 
is not working. It's not kicking in. They can't process and follow up. I already mentioned being more susceptible to scams. And I have heard of people losing a lot of money, a lot of money, sending out thousands of dollars because they've been told they've won a million dollars. And this person in this happened to be in California was saying, oh, you just need to send me a thousand more dollars and we will have that. It's okay. It's okay if your phone rings. Sometimes people have to contact you. If it's a scam caller, we'll take care of that too. Police station is right across the street. Um, inconsistency with normal pattern or lifestyle, like forgetting that somebody, a woman who always got her hair done every single Friday, and then she's forgetting that it's, you know, she has that appointment, she's forgetting all about it. And she doesn't remember that that's been a habit. Somebody who was going to church or temple every week, and they're not showing up. And it's like, well, this is not like them, is what you're thinking. Somebody who used to dress perfectly, no matter what, whether it was casual or dressy. And now they're like a little unkempt. And they're like, whoa, that's, she never came in with a spot on her shirt or something like that. So those are just a few little things. The Alzheimer's Association, where I did work for just about 17 years, they have a ton of information on their website. It's alz.org, as you can see on the slide, but they list the 10 warning signs. First of all, it is short-term memory loss that disrupts daily living. It's not just forgetting a thing now or then. It's, it's beyond that. So short-term memory loss is you've just gone to the movies this afternoon. You walk out of the parking lot and you turn to the person with you and say, oh, what's the movie? Maverick? Is that is that the new one? Ma Maverick is playing and you just went to see it. Maverick is playing. I really want to see that. And you're the person who doesn't have a memory loss issue and you're saying, uh, look at the tickets. We just spent $40 on tickets and popcorn. We just went there. What is what is the matter with you? you know, is what you're, you're thinking in the real world then, but the person truly does not remember they were just there at the movie. So again, that's a step beyond normal. And that's the short-term memory, not long-term that stays intact, usually for a much longer period of, of, of time. So being that I'm on honor flight, we deal with World War II veterans, Korean War veterans, and the veterans can remember things from years and years and years ago but maybe they don't remember what they had for breakfast or what they did last night. Challenges in planning or solving problems. We all know it's hurricane season in Florida and we all know what we are supposed to do. Water, batteries, you know, have an evacuation plan if you live on Hutchinson Island, all different things like that. People with a dementia don't know how to plan. They don't know how to follow through. They don't know how to make things happen. A plus B no longer leads to C. Two plus two no longer equals four. Difficulty completing formal tasks, such or familiar, familiar tasks, such as the gentleman who is always able to fix everything. And now he's taking the lawnmower apart. It's all over the garage. He took the TV apart and that's all over the living room floor. And this is the man who always fixed everything. He was, he was not a procrastinator, things like that. We had one gentleman who actually, he was a carpenter and a builder, and he was so proud. He put a new flagpole up. He hung the flag up shortly after this, somebody came knocking at his door and knock, knock, knock. He just goes, do you need help? And the carpenter was saying, no, what would make you think I need help? Well, he hung the flag upside down and he didn't realize it. This was probably over 10 years ago. It wasn't during these political times. And he didn't, he just didn't notice, you know, not gonna throw that in there. And that to me, you know, for somebody who was a really proud military veteran and him not to notice, even when it was pointed out to him, that was a clear sign something wasn't right. We don't know what, we're not blaming Alzheimer's. Confusion with time or place, not knowing like right now, what town are we in? Anybody know? Thank you, Ann. <laughs> Port St. Lucie and what state? Okay, that's good. Nobody said New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. I'm getting, I'm getting closer. Um, so we know where we are. Somebody with Alzheimer's, I might've actually said, you know, where they used to live from years ago. 
my mom always thought she was in Pennsylvania where she grew up, but she was, hadn't been there for 60 years, but she still, that was her home and that's where she wanted to be. So trouble understanding visual images and spatial relationships. First of all, think about driving a car. You have to figure out where on the road that big giant thing around you is. That's a visual and a, a visual image and a spatial relationship. How do you figure out where your car is? How, how do you know when it's too close? How do you know when you're gonna hit the car next to you, go drive into the store in front of you or things like that? The cars that are parked totally, we actually had a sign of somebody it was, a, I think, a brain tumor when instead of park, driving into the parking lot, our first clue was she parked across. She didn't have a nice, shiny, um, new red Corvette or anything else that she was trying to protect from other people hitting her car. It was just, you know, an older car. And it's like, whoa, what happened here? Why did she do that? And then we found out later that she was dealing with a brain tumor issue. So those types of things, not knowing you know, what's where, being able to understand that relationship. New problems with words and speaking or writing. We had one gentleman who was a journalist. He always wrote beautifully. He could no longer, his wife noticed it when he couldn't sign, make the beautiful notes on birthday cards like he used to do. That was a big change for him. If he never wrote notes, that's not a change. That's not what we're looking at. It's a change for what was normal for that person. Uh, misplay we already talked about number seven misplacing things and losing the ability to retrace your steps where did you have it last where were you um, decreased or poor judgment could be in terms of the clothes that you wear it could be in terms of financial decisions it could be giving away things of value that you know you really shouldn't um, things like that but your judgment is off withdrawal from work or social activities a lot of times people just don't want to embarrass themselves they know on some level something's going on so they kind of withdraw into their shell it protects them if they don't talk to people the people don't have to know they're dealing with memory issues so they do withdraw and they often have depression which is treatable and we can have changes in mood or personality a lot of people seem to associate anger and um, having almost temper tantrums with Alzheimer's disease. But in reality, I've heard of more people saying my mom is so much nicer now that she has Alzheimer's than people getting violent. And typically when that happens, the violence or the anger, it's because it's a caregiver who inadvertently is doing, staying in the real world when that person with dementia is in their own world and they're correcting them or trying to, you know, tell them they're wrong, they said something wrong, what they said wasn't true, things like that. So inadvertently, that's why it takes education. It takes somebody coming out and say, you know, if I look at Carrie in there and I say, hey, Carrie, I love your pink shirt. Carrie, raise your hand just for a second. Carrie, I love your pink shirt. Now in the real world, what would you say? It's not pink, is that? Yeah, right, exactly. It's not pink, it's blue. And it really is blue. But maybe I just forgot my word. And maybe, and now, now I feel stupid because somebody's just corrected me and told me, well, that's not pink. So I'm, you know, that you pointed out a deficiency in me inadvertently without even trying. And so then I'm going to get angry and I'm going to just, you know, throw something. So this is a, there's a new set of rules that people have to learn when you're dealing with people with memory changes. The number one rule, and it's on that handout, 10 absolutes, is do not argue. Carrie in the real world absolutely would know just to say, thank you. She wouldn't correct me. She would just say, I love pink too, you know? And that's because there's a new set of rules in town, new sheriff in town. So who's at risk for getting dementia? Anybody know? Everybody, anybody with a brain. I think that's everybody here, right? Anybody with a brain can, is at risk. Some of the famous people, you've probably seen a lot of these from Glenn Campbell to Bronson to P President Ronald Reagan announced in 1994 that he had Alzheimer's disease. I think that's when I started in my career with memory loss disorders, right before he made that announcement, I think it was September. 94 or October. 
um, I really think that is when the world all of a sudden became much more knowledgeable about Alzheimer's because Alzheimer's has actually been around for over 100 years. We just didn't hear about it. And doctors didn't learn about it because it was studied to be a rare disease that happened in young people. That's what the original doctor wrote, Dr. Alois Alzheimer from Germany. So all these famous people, it doesn't matter what your career was, anybody can get Alzheimer's, doesn't matter. But dementia is only one of many reasons if you start to see unusual behaviors in somebody. So everybody, if we can be more aware and become proactive, get a free baseline memory screening. And one of the things, I don't have an August calendar, but for here, I think it's here that Tequesta from Brain Matters Research actually comes here and does a free screening. When I talked to her yesterday, I said, Tequesta, are there any screenings coming up? And she said, I have one three o'clock appointment in August, but I don't have any other details. So that would be somebody here at the front desk if you want a free screening. And if she's not doing them um, anymore in August, whenever she'll, she does them again here, she brings them here. We also do them at Brain Matters Research at the Kane Center where I work on Salerno Road in Stewart. That's a free thing. Anybody can come in. We've had a lot of young professionals come in to get their memories tested. And a lot of them, it was lack of sleep and it was stress. That affects your memory. So many things do. So what is dementia? And what's the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? Dementia, first of all, is not a diagnosis. It is an umbrella term. It's this umbrella term that basically is short-term memory loss that affects daily living, as we already mentioned. It's enough short-term memory loss that it really interferes with your daily life. Might forget to eat, might forget to take your pills, might forget you had left something on the stove. And it's a pattern. It's not just a one-time thing because we all do these things once in a while and we catch ourselves. At age 85, it's almost one in two who have dementia, some type of dementia, but Alzheimer's itself and other types of dementia can affect people much, much younger. The youngest person I ever met was a pilot age 40. Younger onset Alzheimer's disease. For him, it was a genetic thing because his father also had it. It's more frequent in, on the maternal side. Younger onset is under age 65. So there's many, many different causes of dementia and some are reversible. That's why if, if people are starting to forget things, don't assume it's Alzheimer's. Don't assume even if they're 85 or 90, where it's the high risk factor of age. Don't assume, get a good workup done. And as I told my mom, when she started having memory issues, it's like, um, mom, if your doctor says to you and you're 85 years old, the doctor says, hey, Amelia, what do you, what do you expect? You're 85. I said, fire the doctor for that issue and get somebody who's going to do a little bit of evaluation, see if you have a brain tumor, see if you have a B12 deficiency, see if you have a thyroid problem. Don't let any doctor tell you just because you're age 85, you should be having dementia. It's not true. So um, many, many disorders and causes. The thing is, you'll probably notice changes in people long before a diagnosis is made. It's very sneaky, it's insidious. If it's Alzheimer's disease, we never know the date of onset. We might know the date. Oh, look at this. Thank you, Anne. Brain matters. We have little postcards anybody needs, we'll put them out. It's a free memory screening, totally free. There's no insurance billing, nothing like that. Um, nine to four, August 2nd, there was one appointment. I know it might be taken by now. And it says, let's see, you register on, online yeah, November 1st, February 7th and May 2nd. So there is that information. I'll make sure it gets out on the table. So that's wonderful. That started last year, I think. So Alzheimer's is the most common type or cause of dementia. It's irreversible. It's going to get worse over time. It's going to slowly progress. And what we see, and we can see them now, we have the brain scan, the PET scans that can see amyloid in the brain. Um, so that's what we look for. Amyloid plaque, 
and tau tangles. The, the PET scan sees the amyloid. So with Alzheimer's, the progression is going to be, it's like good days, bad days, ups and downs, but it's slow, steady downhill decline. A vascular type of dementia, which is your heart, your oxygen, your blood, you know, every, things aren't working right with your vascular system because the heart isn't pumping right or your blood pressure is high. You can be functioning at this level, have a stroke and then like psh, drop down to this new level of functioning. And then you can plateau for forever. But if you have more strokes, it's usually step drops down. Um, Alzheimer's doesn't typically work like that. It's very slow and insidious. Chronic alcohol abuse, people who have been drinking and partying their entire lives have killed a lot of brain cells. And you can develop a dementia that looks like Alzheimer's disease caused by your lifestyle choice. Um, Lewy body dementia is what Robin Williams had. And that looks like a combination of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease, a little bit different. Lewy body, there's sleep disturbances. So if uh, you have a married couple and they're sleeping in the same bed, whoever has Lewy body uh, disease is usually flailing. They're acting out their dreams. So the person in bed next to them might get punched a few times, not on purpose. That's what they do. They act out their dreams. CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, recently has been talked about in football players. Um, a lot of head injuries, car accidents, things like that. That's when you see CTE. And then the big important thing is why you want to go get an evaluation and preferably by a neurologist. You can always start with a free brain screening, but, um, and just to see if your changes are normal for your age, that's what they do. But a neurologist will go a step further and then a neuropsychologist will take it even further than that. But what if it's a medication causing the memory changes and you get off that medication and you go back to normal? I mean, wouldn't that be a sin to be told you have Alzheimer's disease because a doctor thought you were too old? Oh, and we have had that happen. Um, vitamin deficiencies, as we get older, we process our food differently. So what we used to eat that used to keep us healthy years ago might not work so well anymore. Um, sleep deprivation, depression mimics Alzheimer's disease as well. And depression is treatable. That's why we have antidepressants. There's actually physical changes in the brain. So as you can see, the healthy brain versus the advanced Alzheimer's disease brain, it weighs less. There's a significant difference. It's like, to me, I am a social worker, not a nurse. So when I look at, I think of sponges. So this, the healthy brain is the wet sponge that you just ran under the faucet and it works really well. Whereas the other ones, like the sponge that's been sitting out on the counter for a month, it's all dried up. It doesn't work too well. Um, that's what I picture in my head. But if you look at this shot, this is if you took your slice like this and lift it up and look down. The top brain is our brain. Everybody here is, it's the, our brain is the top one. If you look at the bottom brain, you see the big difference. There's been a lot of death of brain cells and it's very, very different. And think about your expectations. We might have somebody who's um, whatever age they are, but they're playing tennis, they're active, they're doing all kinds of things, all the right things, they're eating right, but they have a memory loss disorder called Alzheimer's disease. So their brain is gonna look like the one on the bottom over time, that's pretty advanced there, I would say. And your expectations of them have to change. They have to be brought up to date because they can't remember things that you told them to do or not to do. A little bit about doing the math in America. Baby boomers were born between 46 and 64, um, started turning 65 in 2011. That was 11 years ago. And in nine years, do I have that math right? 22 to 31, nine short years. You know how fast time goes by. The baby boomers start turning age 85. And when what I just mentioned at age 85, it's almost one in two people with dementia. Um, think about that huge tsunami wave that's going to be happening and starting in about nine years. It's already happening. We see you know, more and more people. Alzheimer's happens to be the most expensive disease in the United States. At age 65, it's about one in 10 that have Alzheimer's or related. We see more women than men 
we see African Americans are twice as likely to have Alzheimer's or another type of dementia, and Hispanics are one and a half times more likely to have Alzheimer's or another type of dementia. Um, but again, remember that anybody with a brain can develop dementia. Presidents develop dementia, uh, Alzheimer's. Reagan had Alzheimer's disease. How to cope, where to get help. And this is one of the things that I wanna make sure that there's time for people to ask questions and um, I'll give you some resources. But remember, there's a new set of rules if you have someone in your life with a memory disorder. It's different, it's going to be different from now on. Picture this, there's two people in the room. Both of them feel confused, frustrated, helpless. Only one of them has dementia. And I picture, I get calls every day at work. And it's usually, you know, oftentimes either adult children calling or spouses calling about the other spouse. And they don't know what to do. And they're both so angry and confused. And there's a lot of what looks like denial happening, but it's not. I'm going through that too. There's another term for that. But there is a lot of confusion. Some tips, if you have somebody with a memory loss disorder, it's always a good idea to approach from the front. If need be, identify yourself. People might not recognize you that should recognize you. And I say should in quotes, because I don't like that word, especially when dealing in this world. But if they don't recognize you, it's just like, hi, I'm Donna. I'm your whatever, daughter, sister, wife, whatever. Keep safety at the forefront of your brains when it comes to memory loss disorders because you know you think about the stove the oven things like that M using a microwave somebody puts a microwave with foil in the microwave they don't realize that you can't put it in there at all and you put it in there for oh you hit 10 minutes instead of one minute and guess what's going to happen you know there's going to be a big problem there so keep safety at the forefront update your expectations if your loved one is the one with memory changes um, your expectations have to change or you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Maintain eye contact, remove distractions. If you're trying to talk to somebody and the TV is blaring over here and the dog is barking over here, it's like nobody's gonna be able to think straight. That's not going to work. So remove the distractions or don't try and have that conversation at that point in time. Be careful not to interrupt, be patient, give them time. Do not argue with their reality. Do not always correct them. Their reality may be different from yours. Be calm and supportive. I know that is so much easier said than done. We all know that, but we have to try. We have to set our you know, goals high. Consider your tone of voice and body language. Use positive, friendly facial expressions. And I'll just give you an example of that. If I, I, I have to leave the microphone and the camera for a minute. If I come up to you and I say, cringing because my body language, my tone of voice, my facial expression, and I didn't do a good job the first time and that's okay, sorry. <laughs> but all those things, people can hear the message behind your body language and your tone of voice more so than your words. So and immediately know before I even said a word that it was not going to be good news and she was going to have to stay here tonight and vacuum the whole place. <laughs> and not go home, even though her foot's in a boot. So yeah, she, she was ready to do it. So consider your tone of voice and your body language and use a friendly facial expression. It helps. Do not talk down to someone with dementia. It's, they are still there. They are still intelligent. And there's so many good resources out there to help, you know, help you understand this. Um, don't talk down to them. Talk to them, even though they may not understand everything you are saying, talk to them like they do. Give them the benefit of the doubt. 
and just treat them with dignity and respect. Speak slowly and clearly. Sometimes you have to ask simple questions one at a time. You have to realize, like if you say, okay, go out to the car and, and open up the back seat and then look for the box in the, on the floor. And that's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. They're going to hear the floor and they're going to be looking on the floor. That's all they're going to hear because you've just overwhelmed them with information. They can't handle all of that. And please do not speak about the person with a memory loss disorder in front of them as if they weren't there, as if they didn't understand every word you're saying. Because I've heard that happen a lot. Somebody's describing something, whether it's to a doctor. If a doctor needs information, write it out, get it to them in advance, um, somehow let them know, but not necessarily in front of that person. Treat people with dignity and respect. That goes such a long, long way. And it makes a big difference. Okay. Oops. Okay. My favorite word, anosognosia. Does anybody know what that means? How about denial? Does anybody know what denial means? Like, okay, so there's a husband and wife. I got a call from the husband saying, my wife was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. She swears nothing's wrong with her. She keeps telling me I never tell her things. Um, all these things. She is in denial. And I'm thinking, your wife was just diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. She is not in denial. She has anosognosia. Her brain has changed, which does not allow her to have that insight that something's wrong, that she is the one who's forgetting. So it's very, very, very different with denial. You have an awareness. You know something's wrong or right or whatever. And you are saying, no, I'm fine. You know, you could have a cast on your arm or whatever. It's like, no, I, I, I'm fine. This is you know, no problem at all. Um, so anosognosia is very, very, very common. Don't fight it. Because they're like, how can I get them to understand they have Alzheimer's disease? It's like, you can't. Why are you insisting? Why are you doing that? You need to rethink you. And you really need to, need to rethink how you're handling things because you're going to create some problems without even trying. So People also are amazing with company manners. You have somebody who they, you know, they're forgetting things. You see them at home 24 seven, you know, there's a problem. Somebody comes to visit and they are perfect. They're like, wait a minute, what's going on here? How did they do that? And then after the person leaves, they're like, who is that? And it was their closest relative or friend or somebody that they should have known. Um, but the company manners works very well for a short period of time. And we're glad when people have those social graces still, and they have those company manners, it makes a big difference, but it fools people, you know, it's like, then they look at the care was like, uh-huh, your mom seems really good to me. I don't know what you're complaining about all the time with all her problems and issues, or your husband seems really good. Yeah. Because they presented well for those five or 10 or 15 minutes. They're capable of doing that. Okay, it's very difficult to determine if someone is a reliable reporter. I've had people tell me over the years, my mom just lies now all the time. And what was really happening was mom wasn't lying. She was trying to re answer questions to the best of her ability based on her limited capacity and lack of short-term memory. So she'd come up with something and it made no sense, but that was her world. Um, when it's difficult is you've just, you've just witnessed your spouse fall. You take your spouse to the doctor and the doctor knows why you're there, but the doctor says to your spouse, have you fallen recently? And they're like, oh no, no, I never fall. And you're like, what? Why are you lying? But they totally forgot. They really, really, really totally forgot that they just fell. They're not lying. They can't remember. And if you ask, do you remember when, or do you remember, like, why are you asking someone who's short-term, a known short-term memory loss, short-term memory questions that you're setting them up for failure? It doesn't work. So sometimes a few little subtle changes can make all the difference in the world because not only is it good for them, it keeps your blood pressure down. It keeps you from getting just like so agitated and frustrated 
it's, that's not good for you. We have to keep you healthy. And that's why we try and teach you a new set of rules. The process to diagnose the type of dementia is very complex. People think, well, I'm gonna make an appointment with the neurologist, I'm gonna know that day what's going on. No, you might not know that year. You might not know for a while and you might get misdiagnosed, but they can rule out things. And it's very valuable to be able to rule out treatable causes of dementia. It's very valuable. Literally people have had brain tumors and it's changed their memory and they've had the tumor taken care of and they went back to normal. So things like that, uh, depression, treatable. So a lot of different things are done. The tests do not say, yes, you have Alzheimer's tests say, no, you don't have this. You, don't, you haven't had strokes or you haven't um, have this or that. So it's a ruling out process, not easy for the doctors, especially in the early stages. They are going to watch it over time. So it's not just simple. Um, internationally, You'll see some things coming out probably at the end of July when all the scientists and the doctors get together for an international conference and they talk about all the things they've been doing in the research. And maybe there'll be something new with a blood test coming out. We're not quite there yet with the blood test. That's actually really accurate. But they are looking at biomarkers for Alzheimer's disease. And that means either your spinal fluid or the PET scan of the brain showing the amyloid plaques things like that, the real biomarkers. So we've made huge advances, even though we still don't know the cause and we don't know the cure if it's Alzheimer's disease. So it's a complex process. How about this? If a person is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, they can no longer sign a durable power of attorney. What do you think? Any guesses? You think that's true? It's false. If somebody is in an early stage, they're totally capable. They are not declared incompetent or incapacitated by a court of law, and they can make a decision about who they want to be their power of attorney. If they met with the attorney, the attorney would talk to them privately and make sure the attorney has to feel confident this person really does know the power that they're signing away, and it's typically to a loved one. So um, they still legally can sign a power of attorney. I have another question for you. When a person is diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, they lose the right to drive in the state of Florida. True or false? Absolutely false. We have a lot of people on the road with Alzheimer's disease. A lot of people. They don't want to give up their license. And guess what? Take away their license, they're still driving unless you take away their car and their keys. So I'm sure you, if you've ever been on 95, especially you have heard of silver alerts all the time. I think every single time I get on 95, I see a silver alert. That means somebody not with silver hair, but somebody with some type of dementia or problem is lost and you're looking for that car. And so by doing that, we have a whole network of people looking on the lookout for that car. We have people wandering. We have people leaving home and getting lost, things like that. But you are not incapacitated or incompetent to drive simply by di diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. If it advances, I mean, one of the things that we want to do is try and pull their license because their judgment is often impaired. Their reflexes are different. It's very scary. And one of our basic driving tests is, would you let your grandchildren ride with them? And if you say, oh, no, never, you know, that's kind of a sign to you. That's like, should they really be driving? Oh, just a mile. It's just a Publix. You know, it's only a mile away or two blocks away, something like that. No. You also have to think about insurance. If it's in the medical records that somebody has any type of a dementing illness, insurance, those people who might be in an accident with that person are going to look for those deep pockets. They're going to sue for everything they've got. So you have to be very, you have to think about a lot of different things. But on the other hand, you can have people with Alzheimer's who actually are very good drivers better than their caregivers often. And there are tests that are done that specifically look to see if you're okay with driving and with reflexes and things like that. So that question is false. The person with dementia is not giving you a hard time. They are having a hard time. And it's just something 
to really think about. They're not doing this on purpose. They're not being manipulative. They often don't get it. They don't see it. They don't understand it. And we have to have a lot of patience. And one of the best things you can do is get educated. The little booklet on the table, Dementia Has Many Faces. If you look at the picture of that girl on the cover, Sharon was diagnosed in her 50s with Alzheimer's disease. That picture was taken right before COVID started in 2020. And we lost Sharon to Alzheimer's disease last year, just before she turned age 65. But I'm at, look at, I mean, that face, that beautiful face, we wanted to make sure people knew that it's, it's not just a 90, 95 year old person with white hair with dementia. It's, we do have younger people. We want you to be aware. Um, on the table, there's some handouts. There's 10 absolutes, the do not argue type of thing. We have a caregiver support groups. We offer them at the Kane Center Council on Aging of Martin County. They're on Zoom. So people from Port St. Lucie can join us. We have one group in the morning for spouses and we have one group in the afternoon for adult children caring for a parent. And it's a different set of dynamics. So we do have those resources for you. Um, basic brain health, just a little bit about what can you do for you to keep yourself healthy? First of all, if it's good for the heart, it's good for the brain. Exercise, you park a little further away, it's good for your brain. Socialization, COVID was brutal when it came to people because socialization just shut down. And that was really, really hard for people. Um, that's a researched component that's good. We know is good for your brain. Good nutrition, good sleep, mental stimulation, and being on autopilot, we don't stop and think. If you wear anything, if you have a watch on and you switch it to your other hand, you think about how many times, I've done this many times and I can't tell you how many times I'm looking like, oh, what time is it? And then I realize, oh, it's on this hand. Or I moved my, my house was being renovated. I moved my shredder to a different room. And it took me a couple of weeks before I stopped going to that room to shred my papers till I got in the new habit because I was on autopilot. You know, it doesn't take long to get on autopilot and just keep going, doing the same thing without thinking. When you travel, you're off autopilot. You're stopping and thinking, well, what am I going to do today? Where am I going? Where am I traveling? What do I have to be aware of? What roads? You know, it's not the same. Well, I'm going the same route every single day. Get off autopilot as much as you can to take care of yourself. If there is suspected abuse, neglect, a neighbor, a friend, a family member, this is anywhere in the state of Florida, um, including self-neglect, call Adult Protective Services, 1-800-96-ABUSE. I wish they hadn't have used abuse in their phone number because it's not always abuse. It's often um, self-neglect. And they will investigate, not all the cases, they'll deem whether or not it's investigatable. And if so, they will show up at the house and check on things. But that's, that's what we're all basically mandated to do. Some of your local resources. I'm actually part of the Martin County Hugs Program, which is about making people dementia friendly, businesses and everything else. Um, right here in town, over on Bayshore, you have the Council on Aging of St. Lucie County. They have a daycare center. That's their number, 336-8608. Um, they've been around for a long time. If you need meals on wheels or things like that, you actually start. Um, the next slide will tell you the starting place. But they're a wonderful, wonderful resource. We have 211. You can call them 24-7. You can get connected, get resources. We're the Kane Center, Council on Aging of Martin County. We have doctors. We have a geriatrician. We have Brain Matters Research. We have an adult daycare center. We, we actually create our own meals on we do the meals on wheels. We cook them there. We create them there. We deliver probably about 500 meals every day. So um, we send a lot of food out. And the Alzheimer's Association is a very good resource. They have a 24 seven helpline. So things don't always happen nine to five Monday through Friday. Think of 4th of July. You could all day long, they were open. Somebody was working around the clock so you could have access to somebody. I want you to know that there's always help around the clock. It doesn't matter. These people are not sleeping. They're up working. So take advantage. Take a picture of the slide if you want, but get those numbers and make sure you get help if you need, need help. Um, the starting point for services, 
is Area Agency on Aging. That they cover this Area Agency on Aging covers about seven counties, including Indian River, St. Lucie, Martin, Okeechobee, Palm Beach. That might be all. But that's where you start to get into the system. You might need sliding scale fee help. You can't afford help these days to get help at home with an agency. It might be $25 to $40 an hour nowadays. So, you know, people need some help. They need meals on wheels. They need transportation. They need homemaking. This is the starting point. So if you need that number, make a note, write it down. That's your starting point. Okay. How about, let me just see. If I do have one other thing that's on the table. My card is on the table, but I also have this little, I call it a dignity card. This says, if you notice any unusual behavior by my companion, it's due to a brain disease. You can handwrite your own, you can use mine, you can take, a, take as many as you want. So my companion has dementia. This allows them, you don't have to, you're at the restaurant, you don't want to say to the server, oh, they have dementia or they have Alzheimer's because they don't like that. You're exposing their own personal health history and they don't necessarily want you to do that. They've told us. So you look at the server and you have the little card right there and the serve, you're holding the menu and it's like, oh, so they see without, you know, affecting the person's dignity, they're like, oh, they're going to be a lot, lot more patient, a lot kinder, a lot nicer, because now they know there's something going on because the person with you does not look like they went, like, if they look like Sharon, you're not going to say, oh yeah, they probably have dementia. Look at her. Yeah, she's probably, that's what's going on with her. Not going to happen. Um, who has some questions? Yes, sir. With regard to the slides, go back two slides to that resource page. Now, absolutely. <laughs> no, it isn't. It is not. The the major one is actually this one. I gave him a whole big giant slide, so that that's the starting point. The 866-684-5885. It's Area Agency on Aging, but it's also now called your Aging and Disability Resource Center. And that's because it changed a few years ago. So they started seeing people 18 and up instead of it used to be just seniors. So it's a step beyond now. So you can call them. You need help with Medicaid or you have Medicare questions. They do a lot. They do a lot. Yes. So your local resource, if you live in St. Lucie County, the Council on Aging, they have daycare and they have meals on wheels. I think they have, I don't know if they're doing the congregate meal sites. They probably are, but they are, they've been around here for a long time and they do a great job. Who else has some questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, it's a wonderful idea. You're talking about if you have somebody, they need a little bit of time to process your one question at a time. And it's absolutely true. We've been told, I used to do an early stage group for about 14 years in Port St. Lucie with the people with the memory changes. And they actually told us, we need more time to process the question. We have to let it, like you said, it kind of rolls through the brain. They think about it a little bit, and then they come out with an answer. If you're patient enough, if you expect an instantaneous answer, it's not going to happen. So that's one question at a time. Keep it simple. If somebody's at home and they need help with dressing, you might hold up two outfits. You want to wear this one or this one today at a restaurant. Oh my gosh, those menus are so complicated. Just, you know, you want a hamburger today or you want a tuna fish sandwich, you know, something like that to keep it a little bit simpler for them. And, and that way they're still, you're empowering them to make decisions about their life because they can get resentful. Like you're always telling me what to do. <laughs> very, very indecisive. It can be very hard to make a decision. So yes, they can get indecisive. Absolutely. Very difficult. Yes.
Well, okay. You're, when somebody has an over the top reaction, we call that a catastrophic reaction. They might not recognize you or something. So their brain has changed. Picture their brain in the cast. So how you respond is going to make all the difference in the world. First of all, if they just, if they didn't recognize you and you want to comfort them, it's like, I'm so-and-so because what happens a lot of times, say a, a couple's been married 65 years. One of them has dementia. They don't recognize their spouse because they're actually the one with Alzheimer's is living in the past. So they think their spouse is maybe 20 years old. So a person who's all of a sudden 85 years old, is like, I don't know you, I'm calling the police. And so we want to keep them calm. Sometimes it means getting yourself out of the room, getting yourself to a safe spot, not trying to, you have to enter their world. It's hard to say, I mean, you can try in a lot of different things. We often mention the fiblet. We don't want to say, don't you know who I am? I'm your wife. I've been, we've been married for 50 years. That doesn't work because um, they don't believe it. But the fiblet is a tool. The fiblet is a white lie. And what it serves to do is keep the peace. It's, it keeps the peace. If somebody, you can't tell somebody the whole truth and nothing but the truth if they have Alzheimer's disease and they can no longer cope the same way. If you tell somebody, a 95-year-old woman, her mother's dead because she is, you're going to shake her up. She's going to be upset. She's going to be angry. She's going to grieve. She's going to, why didn't anybody tell me my mother died? Or she simply doesn't believe you because she's not living in the present time. So how you respond, and sometimes if it's the middle of the night and people wake up and they're confused, you just have to get, get out of their space because they might get protective. Yes, sir. Absolutely. People, unfortunately, get Baker Acted. The question was, can you Baker Act somebody with uh, dementia? And that's an act that allows the police or a licensed social worker to put somebody in a facility for treatment and to be observed, I think it's for 48 or 72 hours, but a special place like New Horizons or Coral Shores or when there's the psychiatric hospitals. Um, people get Baker acted because we, the system fails people with Alzheimer's disease, unfortunately. We don't have proper place for somebody who like gets up in the middle of the night is violent or whatever. They come out with knives because they don't know where they are. They're confused. Yeah, the hospitals, well, they're going to refer to, you know, to get them into a facility to at least get them calmed down and maybe get them situated on some medications that allow them to cope better and to do a little bit, bit better. We try and educate the caregivers, the family members around them too, because a lot of times um, there has to be changes made if somebody is really dangerous. Baker Act means you, you're a danger to yourself or somebody else. So if you're threatened and, and you have a military person, they have guns, they are a threat to themselves or somebody else if they're threatened and they have a loaded gun in their hand. And they have Alzheimer's disease because they don't. Self-care for the caregiver. Oh, my goodness. That is so thank you for mentioning that. Um, it's not part of my PowerPoint, but that is very, very, very crucial. And it sounds like do you want to add something to that? Yeah. 
you are so absolutely right about the self-care for the caregivers, just in case that the uh, people that are going to watch this online can't hear you. But that is very, very, very crucial. It's just like with the take your oxygen first when you're on the plane. You as the caregiver, you have to take care of yourself first because you're of no use to anybody if you don't do that. So I am very, very glad you brought that up. I should really have included that self-care for the caregiver. Crucial. And if it takes a friend, you need a place to vent, you go to a support group. Support groups have been invaluable. I have learned the best information. You kind of sort through what everybody brings to the table. Um, but there's a wealth of information out there. One of the books that we always talk about in support group, it's called The 36-Hour Day by Mason Rabins. It's not a book to read cover to cover because you don't have to. Everybody's different. If they have Alzheimer's type of dementia, everybody's different. What happens to this person might never happen to this person. The 36 hour day covers the gamut of things, but look at the index in the back. They have a great index. Look up, it's like, oh, wandering. Hmm, okay. I better read that. God bless you. I better read that chapter or um, whatever it is, because not everybody wanders, but 65% of people will wander. And the sheriff's office has a wonderful program. Yes. Oh, please make sure you grab my card and call me and we can talk more. But so she's talking about somebody she loves and she's noticed changes for the past five years. Things are different. And now it's a mission. She has to get to the courthouse because she's swept up by the sweepstakes. Yeah, and people believe her because she comes across as very like she's got it together. They wouldn't have taken her down to Palm Beach County. What about the daycare option? Yeah, because there's also Alzheimer's Community Care also has daycares here in St. Lucie County. One's over, um, what is it, by Lowe's over on Cashmere and St. Lucie West Boulevard. There's one back there in a church. There's one on US 1 if you live on the further east side of town. Um, and there's one by Prima Vista and Bayshore. They're all in churches, but it's allscare.org. But I can give you all that information. Don't hesitate to call me. We'll get you some resources because you're right. Your mom can't be left at home alone. It gets to the point where people need that supervision. Um, and it's and when you said you were doing things wrong, you were doing things what the normal way, but you didn't realize that it's a different world when you have somebody with a memory loss, whether they know it or not, your mom doesn't realize it. Anasognosia. Yeah. 
lacks, and that's the same thing. She lacks insight. So it is, she's, you know, she just doesn't get it. And that, and that's something you dance around. You can't convince her and you don't want to convince her. So you dance around that subject and find a way. How do you keep the peace? And with the courthouse, it's like the, the fiblet, like if she said, we have to go to the courthouse today. It's like, mom, I just called them and they're actually closed. There was, you know, an emergency. But does she know that? Because I had somebody, he used to get, every day he'd wake his wife up, gotta go to work, gotta go to work. And he was in um, Palm Beach County thinking he had to be in New York City every day. And, and one day it really was Sunday. So the wife said, oh honey, it's Sunday. You don't have to go to work today. And so guess what? After that, every single day was Sunday and it worked. And it's like, oh, it's Sunday. And it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You don't have to go to work today, it's Sunday. That's the use of the fiblet where it serves a purpose. And that is to keep the person that you love calm. Yeah. So you're the peacemaker and we have to try and put ourselves in their shoes because it's very scary to have memory changes. And on some level, she does know, she gets it, but she also doesn't really see because she would be able to discern this whole stuff with the sweepstakes and the courthouse and everything else. And it won't do a bit of good to take her there because she'll just want to go tomorrow again. What was, yeah. What, did you have something? Okay. Yeah, so we'll talk more. But yeah, there's, there, there might be some options that can keep her occupied. Anybody else have any questions or, yes, sir. Okay. How do you approach the subject with a person without losing their trust? So I would segue it this way. It's like, oh my gosh, I went to this fabulous lecture by this fabulous person. Yeah, I'm just throwing that in there because I'm being recorded, I think. Um, no, that they talked about memory changes and they are offering these free screenings at St. you know, at the Port St. Lucie Community Center. I'm gonna get one for me. Um, I've noticed you're forgetting things time to time, you know, something along those lines where it's not saying you never remember anything I tell you, because they're going to get defensive and put the brakes on immediately. So you want to dance in a more gentle way. And just if you can get them for a screening, um, but be a real good observer too, and really pay attention. Um, and if need be, if you have to contact the doctor, and whether it's a letter, the doctor may not be able to talk to you, but you can tell things to the doctor. If you don't have permission, you know, the doctor can't give you any information, but it doesn't stop you from sending a letter. This is what I'm seeing with my, you know, neighbor, my friend or whatever. So, but yeah, segue with, we, you know, I just learned about this. I'm going to get my own memory checked, get my baseline done, being proactive. That's the thing to do these days something along those lines. You feel free to call me. We'll brainstorm some more. Who else has a question or comment? Yes. So she's speaking, she went back to like native Yiddish where she's Oh, gibberish. Yeah, I did too. Okay, so, oh, you kind of, you, that's challenging because how do you respond when you don't actually know what they're saying? And sometimes they'll catch you at it too if you say, oh, really? Um, you can try and pick up on her tone of voice and see is it good or tell if it's good or bad, first of all, um, just to be reassuring a touch on the arm or whatever. It's like, I, or even just like, I, I understand, or I get it. It's like things like that. That's, that's a challenge. And you just listen to her, watch her body language. Cause it, is she upset or is she happy? 
And you'll, you're able to pick up on that, I'm sure. But yeah, the uh, gibberish and there's not anything she thinks she's talking, just like when you hear the little little kids, little babies. As The thing is, as people, as children go forward through the stages of development, a person with dementia goes backwards through those stages. And that's why you think about, well, would you leave a 13-year-old alone at home? Yeah, people leave a 13-year-old, but what about a seven-year-old? What about a three-year-old? How many of you will take a three-year-old to Publix and sit them at the chair at the front and say, wait right here, I'm just going to go get a gallon of milk? None of you would do that because your expectations are realistic of a three-year-old. But if you took your friend or your neighbor who had a memory loss disorder, you think they know better. Your expectations are that if I tell them to sit there, I'll be right back and I'm only gone a minute while I get the milk, they'll still be there waiting when I get back. So it's entering their world, um, being realistic, changing your expectations. Uh, but just listen for her tone and just, you know, smile. And, you know, what more can you do? Or tell you start talking. I want to tell you something and just tell them like they understand every word you say. It's tough because the grieving process that's happening, it, it hurts our hearts because we don't want to see those changes in somebody that we really care about. It hurts. And there's something called ambiguous loss where the, their people are there, but they're not who they used to be. It's like a little... The stages, well, there's, um, I'm not crazy about stages because different people have different stages like early, middle, and late. If you go to alls.org, they'll talk about early, middle, and late. If you go to Dr. Reisberg, he has seven stages that is more clearly spelled out. Like what you see happening in the first stage is basically nothing. That's the plaques and tangles developing in your brain because they say we have Alzheimer's long before we start to show symptoms. It's already there but we aren't exhibiting memory loss yet. So that's the stage one. If you need that, just email me and ask me for the stage thing. And I'll send you Dr. Reisberg's seven stages because it helps break down the behaviors of what you're looking for. But everybody, they jump around through the stages. Yeah, well, we can, I can help you. Yeah, because it, there's no clear answers. There's no very specific, like this is definitely stage one or this is definitely stage five. Um, it's all over the place. We kind of see early, middle, and late. Early is like you're still very high functioning, still drive, do things. Middle, there's a lot of confusion, mix-ups, bills aren't getting paid, somebody has to take over. And in a very advanced stage, people are maybe totally dependent like an infant in a very advanced age, if people live that long, there, somebody has to feed them, bathe them, diaper, everything. But everybody's different. That is one of the important things. Remember that everybody is different. Everybody progresses differently. It's just not the same. What is the same is the short-term memory loss. That's the hallmark sign of dementia. Yeah, they, people can get very frustrated. And a lot of times they know, yes, they absolutely can get frustrated and they might need a lot of reassurance. They might just need somebody to say, it's okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it right now. It'll come back to you, whether it does or it doesn't. That reassurance makes a world of difference. It's very frustrating. And when they get frustrated, we get frustrated and then they get more frustrated or we're rushing them and they slow down, not on purpose. It's like, we're making them tense by trying to rush them. It's like, we got to get to the doctor. Yes, exactly like that. So they mimic that, but not on purpose. Their brain is a cast, it's different. Their brain is changing, not their fault. Did you have? Yes, Alzheimer's is fatal. It is a cause of death, absolutely. What happens in the brain is, the, the changes, the cell changes start in the hippocampus typically where the short-term memories are kept. That is what's typically affected first. But then more and more brain cells die, it goes further around your brain. And then a lot of times what happens in the later stage, people forget how to swallow. The brain is not given the body the commands properly. Forget how to swallow, you get aspiration pneumonia. 
And a lot of times people, they say it's pneumonia, but it's really the Alzheimer's that is shutting down the organs. And that takes a long, long time. I, I had an aunt who had it for probably 20 years. The connections all change and nothing's just working. People forget how to get dressed. They forget, you know, where the bathroom is, things like that. It's a hard disease. It's good to reach out for help. Any preventative? Anything that helps them through it? Um, well, there are medications and we, we, the medications, there's like Aricept, Exelon, Galantamine, Revastigmine, there are some are generic and some are that, um, the new one, Adjahelm. Um, there are medications, but it's not, typically they don't, you don't see people like all of a sudden they get better. Like you have a headache, you take an aspirin and your headache goes away. That's not how these medications work. They might keep people functioning at a higher level for a longer period of time, but the disease process still happens. So they might be functioning higher, longer. And it's hard to say, but they do feel that the mental simulation and the socialization, that's why daycare is a really nice option because they're, they're using their brain. They're stimulating you know, their, their senses and thinking about things and that's healthy. Yeah. And it's heartbreaking to watch that. Apathy is part of the disease process too. So you just, you know. Yes, sir. An Alzheimer's Center for Oh, Alzheimer's Association. There, the Alzheimer's Association office right now is on Lake Whitney Circle, but it's I don't think it's usually staffed with a person sitting in the office all the time because of COVID. So, but they have that 800 number. No. Yes, we actually, we get a lot of walk-ins and we always have materials like the dementia has many faces. Our, our library right now, our book library, it, it's, you know, we used to have books that people could borrow and I guess um, probably don't have that access anymore right now. But we don't have exactly what you're looking, what you're talking about. And I know what you mean, because down in Palm Beach County, they did have an Alzheimer's, it was called the Alzheimer's Resource Center. Um, and there are different offices um, where you can get help. But there's not like one state of the art, like everything's right there in one place. It's a little bit more scattered than that. But I'm, I'm happy to help you find resources if you need. There are, there's no research in St. Lucie County that I'm aware of. We have Brain Matters Research. That was the first research group to come into Martin County. So we have that. And there, as the further south you go, the more you see. And if you go up to Melbourne, there's research there as well. There's memory disorder centers, but there are the closest here is Melbourne and the closest memory disorder center and that's more for diagnosis is uh, West Palm Beach. So we have those two memory disorder centers. Um, what was the rest of your question? There was just one of the other agencies just did, they had an annual conference, but it's usually taking place down in, it serves the Treasure Coast, and there used to be one here every year. And I used to do one with the Alzheimer's Association every year. Um, 
And we still do an annual caregiver workshop, which is going to be in March of 2023. That's an in-person, very down-to-earth practical information. The research, um, the, the one that just happened was in May, and it'll probably be next May, but again, down somewhere in Palm Beach County. Uh, COVID just changed so much. We've lost so many things temporarily. But... We can certainly direct you. Different people do different things at different times. Sometimes the doctors, you know, will have different doctors speak or um, neurologists or researchers that will really give you some good state-of-the-art information. There's somebody, I, I just attended a presentation that um, Keith Gibson from the Alzheimer's Association did. It was total state-of-the-art information. It was really excellent. Um, but the Alzheimer's Association is a good, reputable source of facts, facts and figures, support, caregiver support, caregiver take care of yourself, um, all that. And they're available, like I said, 24 seven. It might be never when you talk about when is the time to move somebody into a community. And that depends so much on the caregiver and the help that you have. Um, many people stay at home for their entire lives. Um, but we do have a lot of memory care units. And sometimes first supplementing the help that you have at home whether it's through daycare or in-home help. So the caregiver gets a break. They get a little bit of time for themselves. But you, people draw their own line in the sand as to when would I not be able to take care of my person anymore? I had one caregiver who fell and broke his shoulder, so he literally couldn't take care of his wife anymore because it took physical work from him. So he, that, was, that was it. He, that decision was made for him. Safety is an issue where the decision can be made for you. If somebody is always, you know, if first of all, they can't be left at home alone a lot of the times. So if you can't be there or have somebody else there 24 seven, that's a consideration. Not everybody becomes incontinent, but that's a consideration. That's what people say, if, if, that, if that happens, I just can't do it. I don't know how to take care of that. I can't do that. So you have incontinence. Yeah, so if that's happening at home and, you know, there's things all over the house, um, that might be somebody else's line in the sand. So it's so different. There's no one exact time that's like, yep, this is, this is the time. And even, I mean, you can have hospice help at home. You can have every level of care help at home if you can afford it. Met, there is no group, no agency that pays for 24-7 help at home. Nobody does that. Not Medicaid, not me Medicare doesn't really cover anything in terms of long-term care. They'll cover short-term if somebody's hospitalized, but they don't do any. Well, the Alzheimer's, you asked about funding and research for Alzheimer's. The Alzheimer's Association is the number one funder of research. So they place a huge priority, but they also have help for family members and everything. They have caregiver support, but they are second behind the United States and China when it comes to research. So they are huge with that. Not some agencies are more tuned into helping, you know, resources at home or help cover the cost of daycare or things like that. But it is explosive. And what I was mentioning before was there's an international conference of scientists at the end of July. I don't know where it's held this year, but we always get things usually in the newspaper or on the news about the developments that they have come out with at this annual conference of international scientists. It's really very exciting. And that will be, that is sponsored by the Alzheimer's Association if that helps. So there is research happening every day all over. You know, there is a lot of hope and there's a lot of help. 
I know. So like, who wants to live to be 150? Yes, sir. What was the first part of the question about the? Oh, you know, I haven't heard enough facts about that yet. And I, I mentioned, I just had been to the state of the art presentation. They did not mention that at all. Somebody else asked me about that spray that knocks the amyloid out. I don't know how much that has been researched, how many people were involved in that study. That's something that we always ask. Like, is it 10 people? Did it help? You know, did it really work? Um, I don't think if that's something that's going to legitimately help, I'm pretty sure we'll hear about it later this month when they have that conference. But we're going to keep our fingers crossed that that'll do it, keep people at least, you know, at, at that at a functioning level. And what they're trying to do is preventative research to stop it from ever happening. And that's exciting. Any feelers on the cause or? No, we don't really know the cause of. They, they say that, the, yeah, all those things can have an effect, lifestyle, environmental, um, the foods, the nutrients and things like that. But we don't know anything that's a definite cause at this point. There are factors that help mitigate the onset of Alzheimer's, like they always have said higher education. Um, there are certain factors, you know, taking care of your blood pressure, diabetes, watching those numbers, watching your weight. She's a popular lady. So those numbers, they do help taking care of those things. But we just don't have them. More women than men. That's not, that's not part of that equation. And that is true. Women typically do live longer than men, but that's not part of the equation. And Maria Shriver has been real big in that um, with the research with that as to why more women than men get Alzheimer's disease. And there's more of a genetic link on the maternal side, especially with the younger onset. Um, but we don't know that yet either. That's what we see. And it's not just the age factor. No, not at the Kane Center. We deal with every, we have so many fun activities. We have a concert on Sunday. Yeah, we have ex Zumba classes. We have a lot of things. Yeah, we, oh yes, we have lots and lots and lots of things. Yes. Yes, we have, oh yes, we have great, great things going on. My specialty is dementia. So that's my love. I just, I love that. So, but yeah, Is what? Oh, to the Kane Center, is that exclusive to Martin County residents? No, not at all. The, now the state funding, that would be exclusive to the county that you live in. Like if you need sliding scale fee help from the state, they're gonna say you live in St. Lucie County, here's your options in St. Lucie County. But anybody can come over to, to us, we're having a dinner dance and it's gonna be a lot of it. It's, uh, it's actually a fundraiser for our daycare. It's on, I think, Friday, the 22nd of July, but we have a great entertainer. We're going to serve food. We have an incredible cook, a chef, um, and everybody's going to be dancing. People love that. So we're, we do a lot of fun things like that. Come bring your mom, come over and join us. You'll have fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We really have a good time. We have people that just can't wait to get out there and, and this is just, it's lovely. But yeah, we have a lot of things for the healthy people. 
Um, we have people all day long playing cards, playing poker, playing well, mahjong. They're kind of members. They become members of the club and they just have a wonderful time every day. You're, you know, you never know what we're going to be doing over there. We've had the highwaymen come in and do displays and we've had um, art shows and jewelry shows and all, just lots of things. Movies, a free movie once a month. Yeah, that, that's at the Kane Center, which is Salerno Road um, near Canner Highway in Stewart. Yeah. Yeah, Kane Center is our building and we're the Council on Aging of Martin County. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you. I, I won't rush off if somebody has some questions. I don't know how to make this stop recording. Okay.